Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I am in a sleeveless shirt because it's so goddamn hot here where I am. But don't you worry about a thing because now we're getting into some anime, baby. But before we continue with this anime story, please give me your likes, your subscribes, your comments of whatever you want to comment, all the good stuff that you want to give me. Please do. I want it all. I just, I'll, I'll, I'll just take it all. Just give, give all of it. Likes, comments, subscribes, bell button. Don't you dare forget that one. My social media where I'm relatively very active, maybe sort of. And if you want to be a good person who wants to help me out, please, there's a Patreon link down below. Shoot me a few bucks. It really helps the show keep going. I mean, and this isn't really a show though. It's just me goofing around in a wife beater. But never mind. Never mind. All right, let's get into it. So today we're talking about the Monogatari series. So this is going to be a mouthful. All right, so the Monogatari series is notorious for being convoluted and retarded. So we're gonna have a little bit of trouble explaining this. Actually, I'm gonna have a little bit of trouble explaining this. You're just gonna have to sit there and, and listen to me and maybe watch a few screens I put here or something. The Monogatari series is based on a light novel series made by a dude called Nisio Isi, which if any of you fine ladies and gentlemen know anything about Japanese, is obviously a stage name because the Japanese don't really have the C thing. They 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 don't have that. They they always have a she instead of C. I don't I don't know why. I don't know why they don't use C. Who knows? It's based on a light novel series by that dude who said there is no way you can make my my fucking light novel into an anime, goddammit. So he gave it to Studio Shaft to make an anime, which they did. And it's one of the cult classics. I mean, I don't know if it's cult, but it's one of the better animes I've seen ever, really. The thing about it is, it's convoluted. I'm gonna try to break this down in an organized sort of way. So first, we're gonna get into the visuals, baby. The visuals by Studio Shaft are pretty cool, actually. The way they do things, it has a lot of these flashes on the screen with like te text and everything. That sort of makes it kind of difficult if you're watching with subtitles because you can't really focus on the subtitles and the, the things that they're flashing on the screen. But overall, it's pretty pretty gorgeous. It's a pretty good looking anime, I have to admit. The music, pretty good, but I'm pretty sure, okay, don't quote me on this one, but I'm about 90% sure that one of the songs, one of the background songs, is the exact same song from, from Persona 4. <laughs> You know the one I'm talking about. Moving on. The sound effects there really aren't any, to be honest. There there are, but I I didn't really pay attention much to them. Where the anime really shines is its story, which is convoluted to hell. It's about this dude called Araragi, who is about as smart as, a, as an average garden snail. No, maybe maybe a little bit smarter than a garden snail. A frog, maybe. Yeah, a frog is about his intelligence level. He is one of those dudes, the, the, the classic stereotypical anime dude, who's like, I will do anything for for my emotions and what I think is, is right, even if it means I die. But he can't die because he's a vampire. He got turned by this by this vampire. Don't worry, this is like in the first episode, don't worry about it. So he got turned by this vampire chick into a vampire dude. So you have a vampire chick and a vampire dude. And then they, uh, with the help of this priest looking motherfucker, they, they solve all of that shit. And now he's half human, half vampire. And, uh, and the vampire lady is a, is a doll. Or not really a doll, she's like a non-moving, depressed otaku child or something like that. Capiche? Yeah, good. Alright. The story is separated into a few different seasons, and each of those seasons has its own name. Except they're not really seasons, where you have multiple named mini-seasons stuck into a season. You're gonna need a guide for this, okay? <laughs> You're gonna need a guide for this. It's complicated. So the first one is Bakemonogatari. Chronologically, it's not the first one. There are different ones which have come before it, but it was released the first. I mean, when I say chronologically, I mean like timeline-wise in the game. Stop saying game in the, in the anime. Start with that one. And that one is separated into a few little stories and it starts pretty tame. 
it starts relatively tame. And one more important thing, after you watch all of it, you, you're going to have to go back and watch that part because after you learn all of the shit that you learn, going back to the first season is mind-blowing because you get everything is explained why right the characters all act weird a lot of them are basic anime stereotypes so this is it's almost like a harem anime but not really a harm anime but yes it fucking is a harm anime so deal with it <laughs> but it's a different type of harm anime so they take all the stereotypes like you have Aranagi who is the the dumb twat who gets all the chicks for no reason you have the, his girlfriend who's called uh, Senjongahara, Senjongahara I think everybody calls also <laughs> into the names all of them are some sort of symbolic puns and they're all weird names the thing about the whole series is that everything is quite quite symbolic it's it's almost a cult in a way not a cult o cult with an o it's almost like a cult in a way you have her his that's his girlfriend this is the first season it's not really a spoiler it happens in the first three episodes deal with it that's his girlfriend and she's the classic tsundere character and then you have the, the classic smart girl character and then you have the classic i don't know moe chibi pe pedo bait character and then you have the the whatnot like all of the all of the standard all of the classic all of the stereotype anime girls are in this anime and they actually take those stereotypes and flip them upside down by giving it giving them death, which no other harem anime does, because it's basically like, oh, I'm, I'm angry, Ooh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm retarded, oh, I'm, I'm shy, oh, I'm smart, oh, I'm, I'm this and that, nah, no, 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 it's not that shallow. It actually has depth in uh, all of the characters, which are explained through little, these little stories. Even the name of the first mini season of the first season, it's complicated, get a guide. I'll, I'll link one down below. Even the first mini season of the season has a pun name. So like I said just a few minutes ago, they're all like pun names. And Bake Monogatari comes for, is like a combination of, of two words. Bakemon, which literally means monster, and Monogatari, which means story. So they, he combined it together and called it Bake Monogatari, which literally is a compound word of of a monster story basically but you wouldn't really say that in japanese that way it's it sounds kind of weird the the visuals the visual it's not very action heavy the visuals are very symbolic they really if you watch them if you watch the anime for a second time they start making more sense but the first time you watch them you're like oh look at this pretty flashing thing oh look at how nice this staircase looks oh look at this look at it it's all pretty good looking and now let's get into the how the the, the anime actually works all of the 99 percent of of the anime story is fed to you through dialogue so it's all it all goes through some sort of dialogue and they all talk in a weird way like even if you don't understand japanese i don't understand much japanese don't get me wrong i'm a fucking dipshit and when it comes to the language but even if you don't understand any japanese you can hear how they talk weird even the subtitles are, are translated to, they, they sound really weird it's it's very strange and it's done on purpose it gives you a weird feeling when you watch it it's it's kind of kind of dreamlike atmosphere ah oh, yeah that's that's it. it the whole anime has this dreamlike atmosphere it's it's quite quite something else i have a theory about that which i'll mention later you really need to understand a little bit of japanese to, to get into the crux of the matter. Uh, for example, in Japanese, you have like kanji that mean many, many things, like back there. And they pronounce either pronounce it a different way or pronounce it the same way, but write it different using a different kanji because there, a lot of the kanji s share their sounds, but they have different meanings. Some of, the, some of the kanji have the same sound, but different meanings. So they use that to an effect to make it sound more cool more poetic i don't know what they're what the guy was smoking I, I have no idea what kind of drugs he was on what shrooms he was taking that I, I have no clue he was he was probably on ayahuasca when he was doing this i don't know cool you're still gonna understand the story you won't have a problem getting through the story and understanding but you will be missing a lot of things and as i said earlier there are those 
flashes on the screen which have some uh, exposition on, on what the character is thinking for example which you will have a problem because they they're talking a lot in the background and you're reading the subtitles because you can't speak Japanese and you get like these weird flashes with text on them so it gets kind of kind of convoluted also uh, there is a character actually a few characters and I've read a little bit on Nisio Isin's storytelling style he really likes to use omniscient characters like some characters that that are so smart that they know so many things that you can't uh, that other characters and the the viewer can't really comprehend but they know a lot of things and they and we don't know how they know the, all those things it's not a detective anime but they do know a lot of things and they they are uh basically serving like an exposition dump so they so they dump all the information on you they seem to be prevalent in every single nisio Isin story because he has written a lot of a lot of light novels so as i said there's uh, this anime is not very combat heavy there's not really much going on except for the talking and a few different locations some some locations that repeat but that doesn't make it a bad anime this is actually a really 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 good anime i was shocked they hook you in such a way that even though they all they do is talk gibberish you really want to hear the rest of the gibberish they're talking about <laughs> It's kind of it's kind of funny like that, but it's it's cool in a way, and and I enjoy it. Also, I have this one theory theory because I like to take take things a little bit too seriously sometimes. I, I like to when when I watch media, uh, and when I watch like anime or re read manga or or play video games or watch a movie or a TV show, I kind of feel like they're real people. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it because I get. I get angry if they make stupid decisions, same way as I, I get angry when when somebody who I know makes a stupid decision and I'm like, why the fuck are you doing that? Don't you have a brain? Use it! So, so I, I would sometimes get angry uh, at the anime because I feel like they're real people. So some of the decisions that they make is absolutely mind-boggling to me. So I cannot think of a world that exists in a way that the Monogatari series exists. Imagine that they're in real life, so that's, I, I feel like they're, they are in re real life. If you look at the anime, it's very much devoid of people. Like, you don't really see many people. In fact, I don't think you, you see anybody apart from the characters who all have a, a story behind them, who all have a developed character. I, I, I don't think you see many people behind that, except a few maybe side characters, but them going around in public parks and very, very very rarely do you have uh, scenes which go around uh, go on in, in some sort of private place like it's mostly around in a park a school yeah of course a school what did you think it's Japanese anime god damn it uh, or any any other place which is generally crowded especially in Japan but you don't really see many people you see cars you see trains but you don't see people and I think this was done on purpose I I have a theory that this is actually purgatory. <laughs> yes, I know, it's not real, it's an anime, it's a figment of a dude high on ayahuasca's imagination. Yes, I'm aware of this, but at the same time, I can't help but feel that there's something wrong here, that, that there's something missing, like like it's dead. So I feel like they're, they're living their own, basically purgatory, like they're doing meaningless shit and they're making meaningless shit seem me meaningful. And of course, as a viewer, you're completely invested in it. You, you're really, you're in it, you're in it. <laughs> It's an anime that's surely going to going to intrigue you. Even me, who has I don't know if I told you this, but I have a mild case of ADHD. That's why I move out around a lot. Even for me, it it wasn't all that difficult to follow because all of the dialogue happened so fast, and there's a lot of information. There's a lot of bullshit in the dialogue too, but there is also a f fun to be had just sifting through all of the bullshit to get to the actual content. Like for example, the relationship between Senjo Gahara and and, uh, and Araragi. It's a very strange relationship. I, as you can see, I'm trying to avoid spoilers as much as possible, but it's a very strange relationship, and and the the way they talk to each other. Senjong Gahara is, is a type of character that doesn't really show her emotions, but you can all obviously see that she is 
very attracted to Araragi and that she wants to be with him. And, and she uses like some sort of backwards ass ways and, and uses some sort of weird beating around the bush uh, strategies in order to actually tell him. But he's, he's as thick as a fucking brick. He doesn't understand anything she's saying. So the whole, the whole conversation between them is very, is very interesting. It's weird because Senju Gahara is, is probably the, the person that speaks the weirdest in all of the, in, in the whole anime. But it's very entertaining and there are very strange situations that you can't really explain. I don't know, I just, I, I, I feel very good about this anime. I watched the whole thing in a day and a half. There's like 80, 90 episodes. So that should tell you the mindset that I was in when I was watching that, how, how entertained I was. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I'm, I'm done, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm dying of heat here. As you can see, I'm not so chipper because it's it's this is literally the hottest day we've had all year And I don't have AC because I'm a retard. I never buy it every every summer I say oh, I'll wait for the ACs to go on sale and they'll buy one and I never do because after summer they go, all go on sale and during the summer they just jack up the prices because people are boiling. That concludes this episode today. As always, leave a like if you enjoy, smash that subscribe button, ring the bell. The bell, the bell, the bell is so important. I can't even stress it enough, just do it. Also, comment down below what you think of the series, the ways I can improve the, the things you want me to cover or what whatnot. Follow me on my socials and I would like to give a special thank you to my patrons. Bam! Right here. We have Elden and we have Dio Rain. Thank you so much for your support, guys. You're saving me so much. And if you want to become a patron, the link is in the description below. Thank you so much for, uh, for watching, everybody. I'm boiling. I'm gonna go take a shower. I love you.